I'm Anne Rutherford and this is the garden of 105 Dulwich Village in South London. If it had been possible for you to come last Sunday as planned, you would have arrived here from a gate to next door's beautiful garden where you could have had teas and uh, cream cakes on the lawn and possibly listened to some music. Unfortunately this couldn't happen so we're doing a little tour of my garden instead. At the moment I'm standing by the area where I have my plant sale. Unfortunately I haven't been able to sell the plants so I'm in the process of repotting them all for next time. This buglia tree we have specially for butterflies though unfortunately hardly ever see any these days and below it is a bed of nettle also for butterflies and there has been evidence of them laying eggs there this year so I'm hoping it's red admiral and right at the bottom is a pile of old um, poles and logs for stag beetles again we don't see them very often but we live in hopes we're very keen on nature and this is my son's moth trap about every other day weather permitting he switches on this very very bright light and the moths arrive attracted by the light and they slip down these perspex panels to the bottom where there are egg boxes and they seem to sit there patiently until 5.30 in the morning when he comes and photographs them and records them and amazingly he's had over 500 different species this is the top level of our garden and when we came here there was a swimming pool which is why there's a gate through to next door and when the children left home we got rid of the swimming pool and instead we put in a water garden and more recently this beautiful what is it, a sculpture um, it was created on the spot by James Parker, who's a charming young man from Edinburgh, and it's made from recycled roof tiles of the same slate uh, as the rocks around the pond. And we're very, very pleased with it. This pond has a waterfall and it's for wildlife. It has newts and leeches and all sorts of other creepy crawlies. And it's very restful, it's a lovely place to sit in the evening when you think you've done all you have to do. In time with the pond being put in, uh, various surrounding trees and shrubs also arrive, including the cedar. We're about to go down to the next level, which was just a large rectangular lawn when we arrived. So I've taken all the corners off and each one is slightly different. The one on the left here is a shrubbery and all the trees and shrubs on the road market probably about 30 years ago and on the right there's a sort of a bed with all sorts of mix-up things nothing in particular and my gin and tonic seat it gets the last of the evening sun and so that's why it's called that the bed on the left has a rose arch and tunnel unfortunately since we put all that in, a huge oak tree has grown next door. That's 30 years worth of oak tree. And it's too much shade, so we've lost a lot of the roses. But we have other things there instead. And on the right is what I call my tall border, where I have delphiniums and sunflowers, rose bay willow herb. We're now going through the rose arch to the bottom level and there are still some roses growing there which is nice. Now, this is the only really old tree that we have. It's a mulberry tree and there's one about the same size at Darwin's house in Kent where she's said to have played it as a child. So that gives you some idea of its age. This is where I hang bird feeders for the large birds the magpies, parakeets, jackdaws, pigeons, woodpeckers, and so on. And then they don't interfere with the small birds who are feeding on the other side of the garden, which we're about to show you. This is a fast food 
feeding station for the, the little birds. Um, all the tits and robins, um, nuthatches, we've had black caps, occasional finches. And it's actually a dog cage that somebody gave me years ago. And I've been trying for years to find a parakeet proof bird feeder. And this is it. I fill up the dishes every day. And they're very, very hungry, especially now they've got young ones to feed. That we put in with all the surrounding York paving. It replaced a large uh, pampas grass. <laughs> and the York stone came from factories in the north of England. It was absolutely filthy, so we all spent hours scrubbing it. And the larger paving slabs were five or six inches thick, so it was some undertaking. But in no time at all, it looked as though it had been here forever. The beds around the pond are blue and white, apart from the odd fox dove which pops in uninvited. And this is my greenhouse, which I absolutely love. It's early 20th century. We have an advertisement for this particular model, dated 1935, which says that it's been doing good service for 30 years. I've got too many things in pots, but I can't resist acquiring other things which are not necessarily suitable for the garden. Very pretty Silene with that shocking pink flower. That's called Silene Frivola Rose. We have a beautiful orange in the background and sweet pea matricana. Tour by walking up the side path, um, and this long border is the only border that was here in the cane, although it's got completely different planting now. This is an Albizia tree which I've grown from seed. And it's about four years old, and I'm very excited because it's got little flower buds on it now. So for the first time, you shall see the flowers. My daughter Claudia is a garden designer and she recently worked very hard on this area, clearing away old laurel and branches and undergrowth. She's planted a few more interesting shrubs and sown woodland wildflower seeds so that we can enjoy them next spring. Thank you for looking at this video. We're really disappointed not to be able to open our gardens. Uh, that applies to 103 next door as well and we hope maybe that next year you will all be able to come and see it properly.